I'm not a big fan of these average speaker terminal cups. In fact, I made a video about this nine years ago where I discussed how I find these to be flimsy and have a few other issues with them. Now, about eight years ago, I started using these XT connectors for quick disconnecting speakers throughout an install. Lately, my strategy for subwoofer boxes has been to choose the appropriately sized XT connector, solder it to my wires, drill a hole in the enclosure for the wire, and then have a small pigtail outside of the enclosure that allows it to be easily removed and serviced. These XT connectors are great. I love how strong they hold on to each other yet can be easily disconnected when needed. It's also impossible to mix up their polarity due to the keyed design. And they're also available in larger sizes. As an example, this is the XT90, which is capable of handling 90 amps of current. Now these are available not only as a male and female style connector, but also as this mountable female style connection. This had me wondering, can I use this on a subwoofer box and incorporate it as sort of a hybrid between a speaker terminal slash plug, while also eliminating some of the issues with these average speaker terminal cups. After all, we are in the day and age of 3D printing and many other creators have been designing their own speaker terminals, so can I make my own to match my design goals? Let's find out. Before we can get into creating a design for these, we first need to consider our design goals. First off, why not just cut a rectangular hole in the enclosure and then mount this to the side of the box? That's definitely an option. In fact, I've seen that some manufacturers are now incorporating these onto their mass-produced enclosures. But in my opinion, in a DIY application from an efficiency standpoint, I think it's a little bit more difficult to cut a small little precise rectangular hole in comparison to just using something like a hole saw. I really wanna be able to make the hole for these quickly and efficiently. Then there's the fact that this is the hardware that is included with these. Obviously, this is a machine screw. It's not meant to bite down into wood, and clearly it's not long enough to go through a three-quarter inch piece of material. So there is a solution to that, though. You could just use small wood screws, but my biggest problem with just using this connector as is into an enclosure is the fact that once you go to plug in your plug here, now you have a wire that is sticking quite a ways out of the box. I find that typically when I'm trying to find a home for a speaker terminal on a subwoofer enclosure, I usually want to choose the location that hides it so that you don't see the wiring. As an example, on this enclosure here, this slanted face butts up against the back of the rear seat. So ideally, I would want to put this in that location. So the problem with using one of these basic terminals, which are often compatible with banana style plugs in order to have that quick disconnect functionality is you can see that side profile there. This sticks quite a ways out of the enclosure. Well over more than an inch of added clearance would be needed. As you can imagine, the same exact issue exists if we were to just cut a simple rectangle into the box and mount the plug, you can see that our male part of the terminal here is going to stick out considerably. So the first few design goals, I want this to mount at an angle so that it routes the wire more along the side of the box. I also want to be able to quickly make the cutout for these. So I want to be able to use a hole saw. I want to be able to use the included hardware that comes with these. And I of course want it to be a plug style connection, which has obviously been around for a long, long time and is going to be accomplished simply by using this. A few other things here, I'm sure it's because these are designed using metric dimensions, but it seems like if you use an inch style cutout, there's always some slop in the fitment, so I'd like to avoid that. I want to fit a hole saw size that is commonly available, and I also dislike how close these mounting holes are to the actual cutout hole in the terminal. I find that a lot of times this results in a kind of blowout on the side of your actual cutout hole, so I'd like to increase the distance from here to the center of these. And I, of course, also want to make sure that my designed plug holder is also good and strong. This particular terminal here isn't too bad, but I do want to make sure that in my design, it's nice and thick. Now in a second here, I wanna show you guys what I've come up with for the design, but really quick, I've gotta show you this from our show sponsor, Gladen Audio America. This is the Gladen ATM, which stands for Active Terminal Module. Imagine, if you will, an amplifier that is completely contained within the speaker terminal itself. All you have to do to mount this is make a three inch hole within your subwoofer enclosure. And by the way, this does have a nice tight fit 
and you can see you install that into the hole, mount it in place, and you're good to go. You can see the speaker wiring here on the back side, which has some nice foam tape applied to prevent rattling within the enclosure. And then there's also this quick connect plug here, which provides power, ground, turn on and signal. It's worth noting there are two different versions of this amplifier. There's a two ohm version and a four ohm version, of course, depending on your subwoofer wiring. So make sure you get the correct one. And this is rated at 200 watts RMS. I think this is a super cool, unique solution. If you guys wanna learn more, check out the links down in the video description. Here we go, guys. Here's the design that I've come up with for our plug style terminal. First of all, as you can imagine, it does look somewhat like a normal speaker terminal would being as it's round. I've designed this diameter here to be slightly undersized. That way it has a nice slip fit into a nominal two and one quarter inch hole. You can see that our flange design is also quite large. I've done that intentionally. That way I have a nice distance between the edge of this hole and the diameter cutout. You can also see that I've factored in the actual design of the XT90 female connector itself. I had to do quite a bit of measuring here in order to get the hole dimensions perfectly lined up for the mounting hardware, but no big deal there. And you will notice I've also made this a rectangle. I did this on purpose because I want this to be able to be flipped back and forth. That way, depending on the orientation that I need for this, the text that is on the connector itself will be right side up. If we flip around to the back side here, you can see that I've added in some hexagon shaped holes that matches the outside of that fastener, the nut that is included as part of the included hardware to mount this in place. You can see that I've added several different radiuses throughout the part to give the part a nice finished look and it also adds some good strength into each of these corners. I've done a counter bore for each of the fasteners that will hold this to the enclosure itself and you can see we have six of those and I've sized this through hole based off using a number six wood screw. Also taking a look at the cross section of our design here, the part is designed to be quite thick which will add plenty of strength. I did also model the XT90 connector itself, both the male and female side of it. That way I could just check for all the clearances. You can see that the plug here does have enough clearance to come in and be able to still be reached by your fingers. And also it's of course at an angle, that way the speaker wire that comes out of this part of the plug can easily kind of route itself along the side of the subwoofer enclosure. Let's export this part and get it sent over to the printer. All right, so here is revision one off of the machine and I've already separated it from the support material just to give you guys an idea there what that looks like. This allows for the printing of the flange itself but here we have, like I said, revision one. And the first thing I've got to test on this is the strength. Let's give this the old weight test and see if it can support my body weight. No problems there. A few scratches there now though from doing that test, but let's check the fitment of the XT90. Oh man, it actually fits really good. Yeah, that has a nice tight fit. Obviously it's not mounted yet, but if I go to push this, it takes a little bit of strength to actually get it out. So I'm happy with that. Obviously it's not airtight, but I think we have a solution that we can use to address that later. Let's make sure I get it lined up right. There we go. I also like that we can reverse this to have the lettering the correct way up depending on the orientation that we use it in. Let's check the fitment of one of our number six mounting screws. That's nice as well. You can see it sits below that surface and also has no problem going through the hole while still being a little bit tight. Let's of course also make sure that our plug can properly go into the female connection here, which it can. And right there, you can see how much more low profile we are. It does still stick out slightly, but that's to allow some curvature of the speaker wire as it goes and runs along the side of the box. Now also off camera, I used our hole saw in order to make this sample hole in a piece of three quarter inch MDF. And let's check the fitment here. Yeah, no, no slop, not super tight, but I think we'll be good. Now that's the good things about revision one. There are a couple of things that I don't like that require a revision two. First, it's difficult to see, and this is just a minor thing, but I do wish that this radius in the corner here was a little bit tighter for just a little bit better fit. Also on the backside here, when I went to test the mounting hardware and put one of these little nuts into the hole here, I realized that I made a major measurement mistake. What I did is I measured this nut and then I meant to add five thousandths, so 0 0.005 inches, and I accidentally added 0.05 inches. 
to this size of the cutout here. So it's quite a bit larger than what I wanted it to be. So I need to make a small adjustment there. Also, I had a small round over around the outside of these holes that go around the mounting hardware. I think I want that radius to be just a little bit bigger. It doesn't really have as finished of a look as what I was going for. And finally, we definitely wanna make sure that this has an airtight seal to the enclosure. So I want to be able to use some of this foam gasketing tape. Now the thing is, I could just apply the foam gasket tape as is, but obviously this gasket tape, even when squished, it does have a thickness to it still, and that's going to make this sit a little bit proud of the surface. What I rather do, is I rather measure the max squished thickness of this and based off that measurement, design a small little channel. That way this still needs to get squished, but only a little bit, it doesn't reach its max. And that way this surface is going to come in contact with the rest of the enclosure while still having a gasketed surface based off of this. I also wanna point out too, the reason that I'm only applying this gasket to the inside edge here, as opposed to a full gasket design like this, is I'm going to pick mounting hardware that doesn't break through to the other side inside the enclosure. It's not going to be more than three quarters of an inch from here to here, so I don't have to worry about air escaping out of these holes. I just have to block off the main hole here. And again, we'll use something to address the small minor holes around our hardware. So here, my friends, is revision number two. We're tighter into those corners like I wanted. I've corrected the nut size so that holds itself securely while I screw in each of these fasteners. It's not super obvious, but there is a larger roundover around around the top of that hole now. And we have the channel for that foam seal, which I have now added into place. Now I obviously need to connect some speaker wiring to these plugs. So if you wanna see that in more detail, be sure to check out my previous video. I mentioned earlier that I wanna make sure that there's no air leakage around the connector itself. So I'm using some hot glue here to seal everything up. I've allowed some time for that to dry. My plug terminal is now ready for installation into the enclosure. I've drilled a small starter hole in the measured location for the center of my hole saw. Now I can route the wire inside of the enclosure here. And I wanna make sure that the plug is oriented pointing at a downward angle. And there we have it. I pre-drilled each of the mounting holes with a 1 16th inch drill bit. And now I can add each of these number six fasteners. Here's a look on the inside of the enclosure and I'll of course mount that speaker wire once I go to connect to the subwoofer to ensure that it doesn't vibrate inside. And then on the outside here is our plug that can be connected to the amplifier. And since it's angled, you can see that this gives us a nice tight clearance that we could have this butted up against something else. In my opinion, the coolest thing about 3D printing is that you can design and create solutions for your exact application. Have I met my design goals for my application? I think so. There are a few little things I'd like to tweak. I'd like to kind of get rid of this 3D printer looking finish. I'd like to experiment with what is called ironing, which can actually make this surface a little bit more smooth, or maybe experiment with some different texture coating type sprays. Now, is this the quote unquote best solution for every speaker terminal in the world? Absolutely not. Again, this is just meant for my application. I talk about this all the time in custom car audio. Every application is different. As an example, on these, when you you are using the XT90, you are limited to that 90 amps of current handling capability. For my application though, this is not a concern. At the end of the day, I'm glad now that I have a way to use this plug connection in more of a low profile way for some of my builds as opposed to just using the female part of the plug. And whenever I need one of these now, I can just simply print it up. So a fun exercise in yet again, another way that we can use 3D printing for custom car audio. To see more 3D printing in car audio, be sure to check out the playlist on screen. And a special thanks once again to our show sponsor, Gladen Audio America. Don't forget to check out the active terminal module and learn more at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.